Brian Alfeb. My name is Owen McGee. I'll be talking to you today about Wi-Fi networking on embedded systems and specifically on the Rabbit and, and using Dynamic C. So with that, let's get started. So first, let's ask, why Wi-Fi on a Rabbit? Well, it can allow you to add wireless networking to an existing product. Or maybe it allows you to remove wires from an existing Ethernet-based product. And with Rabbit core modules, this is actually pretty easy. Uh, we have a series of core modules, the RCM4000 series, where we have some that have Ethernet, some that have no networking, some that have Wi-Fi, and for the most part, they're pin compatible. So you can switch from one product in the family to another. A Wi-Fi allows you to add mobility to your network product, and you can deploy your product almost anywhere. Let's talk a little bit about Wi-Fi in general. Wi-Fi is based on the IEEE 802.11 standard. This was introduced back in 1997 and revised several times since then. Wi-Fi is the dominant wireless networking standard in home and office networking. So if you've used wireless networking with PCs or laptops or PDAs, for example, those all speak Wi-Fi. So you've probably used 802.11 in the past. Because Wi-Fi is so prevalent and so dominant in the marketplace, that makes it a really natural uh, wireless networking solution in the embedded space as well. So what do Wi-Fi applications buy you? What can you do with them? You can interface with other Wi-Fi devices, such as laptops, PDAs, other computers. Uh, one possible application is you can use wireless networking in a vehicle. So let's say you have a, you have a, a truck that goes about its daily route. Uh, maybe it makes deliveries or maybe it you know, collects some sort of data along the way. Well, it can, you can keep all that data on the truck and you have some wireless networking capability in that truck. Once the truck gets back to the home base, then it can transmit that collected data back to your home base wirelessly without having to move the data manually. It can just automatically happen once it gets within range of your Wi-Fi network. You can use Wi-Fi in a mobile data collection unit, so maybe some handheld device. You can carry around a warehouse, for example. Or you can use Wi-Fi anytime running wires is inconvenient. What are some characteristics of Wi-Fi? I'm going to talk about two main Wi-Fi network types. There's more than these two. I'll mention that in just a bit. These two types are 802.11b and 802.11g. Now the biggest difference is really the speed, the, the bandwidth that they have available. So 802.11b, uh, theoretical limit is 11 megabits per second, 802.11g, theoretical limit is 50, excuse me, 54 megabits per second. There are some other little differences. 802.11g is a somewhat more robust encoding, but it's also a more com complex encoding. Now, you may have also heard of 802.11a and 802.11n. 802.11a is similar to 802.11g, but uses a different frequency range. Uh, it's never gained all that much popularity, and it's uh, not very prevalent at all in the embedded space. There's also 802.11n, which has not actually been ratified yet by the IEEE. Now, you may have seen some pre-802.11n hardware out there on the market. Uh, they're banking on their products being able to work with the final ratified standard or being able to firmware upgrade to it. Uh, 802.11n does give you some faster throughput. Now, uh, but in the embedded space, 802.11n is not very, uh, not very prevalent. Uh, one more note about these uh, throughput numbers, or uh, these are really theoretical throughput. Uh, in Wi-Fi, there's a good amount of overhead, so typically you won't see 11 megabit per second or 54 megabit per second. Uh, more likely, a, a practical maximum is about half of that. For embedded applications, 802.11b is often sufficient. So many embedded applications have fairly low throughput requirements, data throughput requirements. So the benefits 802.11g provides in terms of throughput often won't be utilized for embedded systems. The only thing to worry about with 802.11b is will that slow down an 802.11g network? And the answer is it does some, but it doesn't slow it all the way down to B speeds. Basically, there's some protection that needs to be done uh, to protect a G network from a B device. And that overhead 
does, uh, does cause some slowdown, but not much. All right, 